This video is sponsored by Oceanwide Expeditions. Hey there, everybody. How's it going? I am excited myself. I'm on my way to the Falkland Islands, then to South Georgia, then to the Antarctic Peninsula. My first uh, Southern Oceans voyage in this part of the world. So lots of new birds to see, lots of new wildlife to see, and hopefully a lot of big icebergs to see as well. Um, I am on expedition vessel Ortelius that is run by Oceanwide Expeditions. We pulled out of Ushuaia last night. Ushuaia is the port in southern Argentina where most of these type of trips take off from. Um, and as soon as I saw this ship, I was excited that it was the smallest ship in the harbor, pretty much. That means a lot of flexibility, fewer people on board, which for people who love wildlife, wildlife photography, birding, uh, gives you a lot more flexibility, a lot more opportunities to do things, to see things uh, in a smaller, more intimate group setting. So that's super awesome. We are bouncing around a bit. We've got a big storm coming behind us with some pretty high winds. So we've been cruising today. It's been quite lovely with the sun out and just watching albatross all day long. Tons, thousands of black browed albatross, lots of giant petrels, great sheer water, white chin petrel, a whole bunch of stuff. So I'll get to photographing some seabirds eventually. But uh, hopefully the first item on the agenda will be tomorrow uh, doing a really early morning landing on one of the Falkland Islands to go look at some black browed albatross nesting and hopefully some rockhopper penguins. Um, but like any expedition, weather, wildlife, unpredictable. So trying to keep my expectations low. Um, there's so many uh, amazing photographs of Antarctica, Antarctic wildlife. Um, that you get big ideas in your head, but on a 20 day expedition, uh, you really don't get that much time at, at all the locations. So just do the best I can with uh, what's put out in front of me. So thanks for coming along as usual, and I hope you enjoy seeing a little bit of this part of the world. Everybody. Uh, as we feared, the weather is catching up with us. Really a very heavy wind, but we're in a bit of a sheltered place called West Point at the Falklands. And the crew is out now, put some Zodiacs in the water, getting ready to assess if we can actually make a landing here on shore. And uh, hopefully we'll be on the land here in a bit. It's gonna be a wet ride. Well, made it to the Falklands. There's kelp geese up here. First uh, order of business is hiking up to hopefully see the black browed albatross colony. And uh, weather's pretty decent for the moment, so we'll see. Hopefully, it'll be good. making the final approach to the albatross and penguins and these big tussocks. It was quite a long walk, actually. I'm a little over, over geared and overdressed, but uh, it's really beautiful here right now. Black-browed albatross are highly monogamous birds with long-term pair bonds. They're long-lived and some of these birds could be 50 years old or more. Some of these couples may have been together for decades. Allopreening, where pairs preen each other around the head and neck, is a frequent behavior when mates are together throughout the breeding season. More than half of the world's black-browed albatross nest on the Falklands. 
Some of these colonies are particularly interesting because of the close association between the albatross and rock copper penguins. This rock copper chick standing beside an adult albatross was a funny sight. There's actually a record of a rock hopper chick being adopted and fed by an albatross pair at this colony. Albatross chicks like this one fledge about four months after hatching and then head out to sea. They won't return to the colony until they're three or four years old when they'll begin courting and socializing, but they won't typically nest until they're at least seven years old. One thing I was quickly reminded of as a photographer out in that seabird colony was uh, <laughs> just how overwhelming it can be when you go to a place. Um, I carried too much gear, it was quite a hike, and then you get there and it's just this overwhelming scene that you know is going to take a while to kind of make sense of and find the shots you want to get. And you wish you had, you know, a week at a place like that to really do a good job. Um, but yeah, it's difficult to. Uh, to start making great photographs in such a limited amount of time. It was just a reminder again that I gotta kinda just take what comes and settle down a bit. I'm gonna try my best not to just try to shoot everything but to sit on some opportunities that I think are, could be particularly rewarding and not try to, to shoot everything as you're tempted to do. So I did my best to try to get some different isolated shots of uh, adults and chicks. Um, Definitely spent some time working on trying to get some of these courtship uh, pair bonding behaviors of the albatross where they're rubbing bills and allopreening, that kind of thing. And the shot that I really wanted to get was some kind of landscape shot with birds on nests in the foreground that really gave the feel of the whole colony. Um, and I did find one spot uh, where I think I accomplished that to some degree. So I'll share that. And yeah, it was really hard to leave, but uh, I think I got a few good ones. So we went there and then uh, the, the weather started to really pick up and uh, we ended up actually being able to make another landing at a place called Carcass Island. Um, that was kind of an impromptu place to go because the, the wind and the swell became really too much to, to do a lot in. Um, but again, the crew, uh, expedition crew did an amazing job getting us all onshore again, offshore, and the wind uh, picked up to 50 to 70 knots so it was pretty insane. But out there at Carcass Island, we got to walk this beach area and there were Magellanic penguins, all of these beautiful kelp geese and some Falkland steamer ducks, uh, a few other things. So it turned out to be really an amazing, wonderful day despite the weather and uh, everybody had an amazing time. So it's pretty great. Bad news is that weather that picked up uh, is showing no ends in sight. So we've cut our Falkland Islands portion of the journey short. Uh, we went into Stanley Harbor last night um, and spent the morning in Stanley. A lot of uh, ships were in there, fishing boats from China were all pulled in there to get out of the weather. So we were able to sleep uh, without getting <laughs> jostled around too much. And now we're, we're blasting eastward again and we are headed to South Georgia. So we've got at least two, three, even four days it could be at sea depending on the winds, but we're trying to stay ahead of this weather front um, and it was just not gonna be possible to do any more landings in the Falklands before we we're gonna have to move on. So we're heading east and stay tuned and we'll see you uh, out at sea.
One of the first opportunities you'll have on any Antarctic trip uh, as you're heading south is to start shooting the multitudes of pelagic seabird species that you'll encounter along the way. It's one of my favorite things about being out on a ship in open water, open ocean, is seeing all these seabird species, albatross, uh, storm petrels, petrels, shearwaters, that basically live most of their entire life out of sight of land, out in the open ocean, um, except for these brief periods that come ashore to nest, usually also on some distant, isolated island in the ocean. Um, it's incredibly awe-inspiring to see some of these birds, some of them are extremely small, that live almost their whole life out in these inhospitable seas, roaming and foraging. Uh, it's just an incredible thing to see. For me, I like to be on the back of the boat to photograph these type of birds. Um, you can usually be lowest to the water on the back of the boat. And for me, that gives a perspective where you can see more of the, the texture and layers of waves behind the bird. And I really like those shots where you see the bird kind of in, in association with waves and kind of suggesting the dynamic flight style that they use uh, using the waves. As far as photographic technique for shooting these kind of birds, generally fast shutter speeds are absolutely necessary. So I'm most often shooting wide open and, whoa, fin whale. <laughs> well, I don't know if that was a fin whale, it looked like a fin whale came up right beneath me right here. So that's one of the other awesome things about it, being out shooting seabirds is <laughs> there's whales out here too. Holy crap. It was literally right beside the boat, came up to breathe. Oh my God. That was pretty amazing. <laughs> so <laughs> I was talking about uh, photographic technique for shooting these pelagic seabirds. Um, Generally, you want to use as fast a shutter speed as you can. The boat is rocking, you're hand holding. A lot of these birds have very fast and erratic flight. So shooting a fast shutter speed is a necessity. Um, generally, 1 2500th of a second I aim for, and if I can shoot 1 3200th of a second, I usually find that that shutter speed actually produces a bit better results in these uh, situations. Um, I'm usually setting my exposure manually. You know, we have very consistent light right now. So uh, right here, I'd probably open up two and a third stops off the brightest part of the sky, but generally just checking my histogram and making sure everything is over towards the right enough um, is, is good enough. You don't, you don't have to set your exposure every time you take a shot. So you can set your settings manually um, and then shooting a lot of volume. Um, to get just the right frame with the bird tip just the right way, everything in focus. And for me, I really like the layers of waves in the background if I can capture them so that the waves look interesting. Um, I also like to shoot on these bright overcast days where everything's a little bit monochromatic and the waves and water kind of turn a dark gray, slaty gray color and you can see the textures in it. That's kind of a day like today, but we've got a lot of fog today. So that's the one situation where it's uh, not particularly great for shooting. Sunlight can also look really beautiful depending on the light on these birds. And in those shots, usually the water's blue when the sun's out, uh, so you get different shades of blue and whatnot. And then autofocus settings, you know, it depends on your camera. Right now I'm using a Nikon Z9, so my autofocus settings, basically I'm using a wide, uh, skinny, wide rectangle as my autofocus area. I have that set to one of my custom buttons. And when I'm shooting birds in flight, I use that button. And that way it limits the amount of frame that the, the camera's actually using to search for and track subjects. Um, and I found that to be really effective with these, with these birds out here. I've been really uh, able to, to jump onto birds and focus very quickly. So it depends on your camera which settings you, that you use. But generally when you're shooting seabirds like this and you get into areas where there's a lot of action, You'll have time to experiment and figure out what settings are best on your camera for these birds and have lots of opportunities with, with a lot of species. So shoot volume, test your autofocus settings, um, and just be out there. You never know what you're going to see. Um, if I hadn't been standing here right now doing this, 
I never would have seen that whale just surface 50 feet from my face. So yeah, one of my favorite things to do when out on a, on a boat, pelagic seabirds and uh, seeing all these different species uh, wandering the sea uh, on our way down to Antarctica. As we left the Falklands, there was some brief disappointment for the things we were unfortunate to miss, but also great appreciation for what we were able to experience and excitement for what lie ahead. Weather is a variable you can't control in life or photography, but weighing the variables and making informed decisions about how you react is the secret. The best move this time was to head to South Georgia there would be more wildlife to see and photograph over the horizon. I hope you'll join me again for part two.